Pebbles Kid Stories. Clever Jackal. Once upon a time, in a jungle, there lived a clever jackal. One day, while wandering in the jungle, he saw a dead elephant. Eager to eat the flesh, the jackal went closer and tried to cut the flesh with his teeth. But the skin was too tough to give way to the flesh. The jackal tried and tried. However, he could not succeed in cutting the thick skin. The tired jackal sat near the dead elephant and started thinking how to solve this problem. Suddenly, the jackal eyed the lion who was coming towards him. He said humbly, Your Majesty, I am guarding this dead elephant for you. Please eat it. The lion roared, I never eat animals which are killed by other animals. I think you know this very well. Saying this, the lion went away. The jackal was happy that the lion did not want to eat the dead elephant. But his problem to eat the elephant's flesh was yet to be solved. After some time, a roaming tiger arrived there. The jackal sensed the danger. The tiger would surely be interested in this dead elephant, thought the jackal. When the tiger came closer, he said in a hurried tone, Please go away from here. I'm guarding the hunt of the king lion. He has gone to take a bath. Before leaving, he has told me that if any tiger comes here, I must inform him, as he has vowed to kill all the tigers of this jungle. Hearing this, the tiger got frightened and left the place. Soon after the tiger left, a leopard approached there. The cunning jackal knew that the leopard had sharp teeth and it could be the solution to his problem. The jackal grinned to see the leopard and welcomed him. Come friend, come. I am seeing you after a long time. You look tired and hungry. Why don't you take a few bites of this dead elephant? I am guarding this elephant for the lion. The lion has gone to take a bath. How can I eat the lion's hunt? If he sees me eating his prey, he will surely kill me. You just don't worry about it. I will remain alert and signal you when I see the lion coming back. You can easily run away then. The hungry leopard agreed and thanked the jackal for providing him with this opportunity. The jackal kept watching the leopard struggle with the elephant's thick skin. As soon as he saw the leopard tearing off the skin from the elephant successfully, he shouted, Beware! The lion is coming! The next moment, the leopard disappeared from there with lightning speed. The clever jackal laughed aloud and sat near the dead elephant to relish it all alone. Moral Wisdom makes victory. Crow and the Snake Once upon a time, a crow was living in its nest on the top of a tree in a forest. A snake was also living in a pit under the same tree. The crow once hatched eggs. One day, the crow was feeling hungry, so it went outside in search of its prey. At that time, the snake came out of its pit. Slowly it creeped, crawled and climbed up the tree. It reached the nest of the crow 
its mouth watered as it saw the crow's eggs. After a few hours, the crow returned back to its nest. The crow saw that the eggs were eaten by someone. It felt very sad. It was thinking, who ate its eggs? Then it made up a plan to trap and trace the culprit. A second time, the crow hatched eggs. This time, the crow did not go away. It wanted to find out the culprit who ate its eggs. In the noon, the snake living under the tree came out and ate the eggs. The crow was shocked and came out of its hiding place. Hey, how dare you do that? Who's that? Oh, are you still here? How dare you eat my eggs? Are you not ashamed of your deed? Why should I? I was feeling hungry, so I made your eggs my prey. Don't repeat this again, otherwise I'll kill you! Do whatever you want, I least bother. At the same time, the crow saw its friend, the fox, was coming. It came down the tree and cried to his friend. What happened? Why are you crying? A cunning snake has eaten up my eggs. I want to punish him, but I am helpless. <laughs> Don't you worry, my friend. I am here to help you. How can you help me? Yes, I've got a plan. Listen to me. Don't cry. Okay, tell me. My dear friend, you should go to the bathing pond of the princess of this country. She will remove her necklace and keep it on the bank of the pond before bathing. At that time, take the necklace and bring it here and drop it in the snake's pit. If I can take the necklace and drop it in the snake's pit, what will happen? Do as I say, then watch the results. The crow flew away and went near the bathing pond of the princess. It took the necklace. The princess shouted and all the servants were alarmed and they followed the crow. The crow dropped the necklace into the snake's pit and flew away. The snake, without knowing the situation, peeped out with the necklace around its neck. On seeing this, all the servants of the princess beat it to death with their sticks. Then they went, taking the necklace out of its neck. On seeing this, the crow felt very happy that all its sorrows ended. Then the crow thanked its friend, the fox, for the timely help. Thereafter, the crow hatched eggs and lived happily. Moral Friendship is proved in adversity. A foolish donkey once a lion, the king of the forest, was wounded in a fight with an elephant. The wounded king could not hunt for many days and had to remain hungry. The lion's minister was a cunning fox. Since the lion was unable to hunt, the fox too had to remain hungry. One day the fox said, Your Majesty, we both are hungry and you are still unable to hunt. If it continues like this, then soon we will die. The lion replied, Oh, minister, you know that I can't chase with my wounded legs. Do one thing. Somehow, if you can manage to bring an animal to me, then I can easily kill the animal and we will both relish upon that. The fox said, I'll try to do my best. Saying this, the fox went away from there. On his way, he met a fat donkey. The fox's eyes twinkled. He said, Hello, friend. How are you? I am seeing you after a long time. You are looking quite weak. <laughs> yes, friend. I've become weak because my owner takes a lot of work from me and feeds me little. 
Oh, friend, I really pity for your condition. Why don't you come with me to the jungle? Our king is very kind. One ministerial post is vacant in the king's court. I think you're just suitable for this coveted post. But I'm a domestic animal of the village. How can I survive among the wild animals? You just don't worry about that. I'll take care of it all. The donkey was fooled by the cunning fox and he agreed to accompany the fox. The fox took him to the lion. When the hungry lion saw the fat donkey coming, he could not control himself and jumped upon the donkey. However, the lion missed the target and the scared donkey fled from there. Due to the lion's haste, they lost a fat prey. It made the fox quite unhappy. The lion was also sad to lose a good meal. The lion requested the fox to try again and bring back the donkey. The fox went in search of the donkey. The fox met the donkey and said in a surprised tone, Oh dear! Why did you run away like this? The Lion King was so happy to see you that he could not control himself and jumped up to welcome you. The donkey was fooled again. He again accompanied the fox to see the lion. This time the lion was very careful. When the donkey reached quite close to him, the lion caught him in his grip and killed him easily. Both the fox and the lion were very happy. When the king was about to eat his meal, the fox said, Your Majesty, I know you are hungry, but before eating, you must take a bath. The king liked the idea, as he did not take a bath for days. The lion proceeded towards the river. When the lion had left that place to take a bath, the sly fox quickly ate up the brains of the donkey. When the lion returned and began eating, he first tries to find the brain, as he was very fond of it. When the brain was not seen, the lion roared. Where is the brain? Did you eat it up? The fox hurriedly replied, No, your majesty. How can I dare do like this? Actually, donkeys are without brains. If he had any brains, he would certainly have not come here for the second time. The lion considered the point valid and ate his food happily. Great Sacrifice Once in a dense forest, there lived a group of monkeys. They led a peaceful life in the forest. They were so happy with their king. One day, the monkey king called upon all the monkeys. Friends, we have been living happily on this mango tree for years, but I anticipate trouble soon. Why, your majesty? Humans have never tasted the mango fruit before. Once they taste the fruit, it will be dangerous for us. Oh, King, what shall we do now? I have one solution. Make sure that not a single fruit falls into the river. But in spite of all this care, a juicy ripe mango fell into the river. A fisherman got the fruit from the river along with his fish. Oh, what is it? My friend may know about it. He showed the fruit to his friend. Look, look what I found among the fish. A strange fruit. It looks delicious. I have never seen a fruit like this. I think we ought to take it to the king. Yes, I think it would be better. So he set off for the king's palace. 
Oh, your majesty, this fruit was among the fish I caught. Hmm, what's that, minister? That's the rare mango, your majesty. It is very tasty. Where does this mango fruit grow? It is in deep forest, your majesty. Okay, minister, make the necessary arrangements. Tomorrow, we are going to that forest. Yes, your majesty. And the next morning, the king, along with some soldiers, kicked off to the forest. When they reached the forest, the monkeys got shocked and confused, and they screamed what to do. Hey, what's that sound? Just monkeys, your majesty. Today, along with the mangoes, we shall all eat monkeys' flesh. The monkeys were shocked. The soldiers began to hunt the monkeys. Oh, master, we're trapped. What are we to do now? Don't panic. I'll find a way out. Do as I say, all of you. Go to the tree near the river. If we have to be safe, we have to go to the fig tree opposite the river. Go and collect a long creeper. Tie the one end to this tree and give the other end to me. Now, all of you do as I tell you. Now I will swing over the river to that fig tree on the opposite bank. One by one, you can come across to the other side. And it tied the other end to his waist. But when it crossed the river, the creeper was too short, so it tried to catch the branch of the fig tree and managed to get it. All the monkeys crossed in this manner. Come on, please hurry. I am tired. I am not able to withstand any more. The last one was a wicked monkey who had never liked his king. Here is my chance to become king. I shall jump across and push him down. The wicked monkey ruthlessly jumped with all his might and kicked the monkey king. All the monkeys watched with pain. There was no one to help him. The creeper snapped and down fell the monkey king. He fell on a rock and broke his head. On the other side of the river, the king was watching. Come on, let us help the poor fellow. You saved them at the cost of your own life. I don't mind. I have done my duty. Let me take you back and look after you. No, please, leave me here. I am about to die. How painful it must all be. I don't mind the pain. I am just happy that all my subjects are safe. Saying this, the monkey died. Moral Self-sacrifice is the greatest gift. The hare and the tortoise Once in a jungle, there lived three friends, a wolf, a hare and a tortoise. One day, they planned to meet together. As per their plan, the hare and the wolf came earlier than the tortoise. After a while, the tortoise came slowly. The hare laughed at the tortoise and said, Oh, how lazy you are! Can't you come as fast as I can? The wolf didn't like the way the hare was speaking to the tortoise. Don't talk like this hereafter. And to be honest, if you compete with him, you won't be able to win him. What sort of competition? Okay, we'll do one thing. I am going to conduct a running race for you both. We'll see who comes first. The hare and the tortoise agreed to it, so they finalized the starting and end point. The race started. The hare started fast and the tortoise came slowly behind. The hare was running so fast in haste, but the tortoise came slowly without any tension or haste.
At a particular point, the hare got tired. It looked behind for the tortoise, but it couldn't find him. So the hare thought, Aha! He will never win me. In the meantime, I'll take some rest. So the hare slept under the shadow of a huge tree. Soon it fell asleep. After some time, the tortoise reached the place where the hare was sleeping. He noted that the hare was sound asleep and started moving slowly but steadily towards the end. Finally, he reached the end and all the animals congratulated him. At last, you've done it. And what about the hare? After a long time, the hare woke from his sleep. He looked behind and thought, Ha ha! The lazy tortoise has not reached the place yet. There's no doubt that I'll be the winner. And he ran towards the end point. At the end point, he got the shock of his life as the tortoise had reached the end point already. He felt ashamed of himself. The wolf turned to the boastful hare and said, See how your pride got in the way of your goal? The slow tortoise hedged on steadily and reached on time to be a winner. So hereafter, don't undermine anybody's might. Moral Slow and steady wins the race. Mighty Elephant A sparrow couple lived on a branch of a blackberry tree. The couple had a comfortable nest where they lived happily. After some time, the female sparrow laid eggs. The couple were very happy. They were waiting for the arrival of their babies eagerly. One day, a mighty elephant came wandering near the blackberry tree. The elephant liked the leaves of the blackberry tree, so he lifted his trunk above to pull down a branch of the tree. The sparrows saw the elephant who was about to pull the branch. They screamed, Oh, mighty elephant, please don't pull the branch. Our nest is built on this tree and there are eggs in the nest. We are anxiously waiting for our babies to come out. If you disturb this tree, then our nest will fall down, destroying the eggs. The arrogant elephant did not pay any heed to the couple and said, I don't bother what happens to your nest. I need to eat. He pulled down a big branch. As apprehended, the nest came down and all the eggs were broken. The couple cried bitterly. The callous elephant enjoyed the leaves and went away from there quietly. The sparrow couple was angry and revengeful. The couple went to seek help from their other tiny friends. The sparrow said, The arrogant elephant has broken our eggs and cried bitterly. The crow couple the frog and the ant consoled the sparrow couple. The crow said, Don't cry, my friend. We can teach a lesson to that arrogant elephant. All of them sat together and made a plan to teach the elephant a lesson for his arrogance. Next day, the sparrow and his small friends went in search of the elephant. They saw the elephant and started attacking him. The ant swiftly entered into the elephant's ear and started droning. The continuous droning in the ear made the elephant dizzy. He fell down. Now it was the turn of the crow couple to attack. The crow couple who were sitting on the tree swooped down fast and pecked the elephant in both the eyes with their sharp beaks, making him blind. The elephant cried aloud in pain. The elephant was totally baffled by these sudden attacks. His throat and mouth were parched, so he ran down towards the lake with his blind eyes. Now it was the turn of the frog. The frog jumped near a huge ditch and started croaking aloud. Hearing the croaking, the blind elephant thought that he was close to the lake 
and went in the direction of the ditch. The very next moment, he was down inside the ditch and died soon. The sparrow couple and their friends had taught a lesson to the mighty elephant. Moral Intelligence is mightier than bravery. Talking Cave Once a lion wandered here and there for food. No animal was found for its prey. Then it ran after a prey, which also escaped from its reach. It felt tired. As it could not get its prey, it walked slowly in disappointment along the forest. On its way, it found a cave. The lion went inside to take rest. It also thought that if any animal came, it would make the animal its prey. The lion went inside. Nothing was available. It stayed inside the cave. It was eagerly waiting for any animal to come. After a while, the fox who was living in that cave returned. Near the cave, the fox saw the footprints of an animal and the footprints were going inside the cave. Oh! Whose footsteps are here? I think it is a lion's footsteps. If I go in, it would kill me. Hence the fox thought of a plan to find out who was hiding in the cave. So it shouted at the cave. Oh cave! Oh cave! There was no reply from the cave. Oh cave! Oh cave! Again there was no reply from the cave. Oh cave! What happened to you? Why are you not speaking to me? Usually you used to talk to me when I call you. There was no reply. Is there anybody in the cave? Is that why you're not talking to me? You know that I will go back if you do not talk to me. The lion foolishly thought that the cave used to talk to the fox. So, if it talked in the place of the cave, the fox would come inside and it could kill it for its prey. Thinking like this, the lion replied, My dear fox, sorry I was just playing with you. There is no one inside. You can come freely. The fox understood that the voice was the lion's. The fox became alert and replied, Oh lion, am I a fool to come inside? You will kill and eat me if I come in. Do not wait in vain. Go away. On saying this, the fox ran away and the foolish lion didn't get anything. Moral There is no use crying over spilt milk. The Bulbul and the Hornbill The Hornbill was once the king of the birds, but he used to kill smaller birds if they made the slightest mistake. So, one day all the birds got together and decided that they must have a new king. Their choice fell on the Bulbul. He has a regal appearance! And he could not hurt anyone even if he wanted to. But how do we break the news to the Hornbill? He won't be pleased. I have an idea. I need your help, Woodpecker. Come with me. Sometime later... Oh, King, we feel that you should undergo a test and prove your worth. You will have to sit on a thick branch and break it. If you don't succeed, whoever does shall be deemed worthier of ruling us. Tell me which branch I should sit on. That is the branch. If I cannot break the branch, who can? The hornbill flew up to it and landed on the branch with all his might. But the branch did not break. Remember, anyone who enters the contest must sit on an equally thick branch. The Bulbul is the next contestant. Is the branch over there thick enough? 
that branch is even thicker than this. If the bulbul can break that branch, he certainly deserves to be the king. What the hornbill didn't know was that the branch on which the bulbul was to sit had been bored through by the woodpecker. And when the bulbul landed on it, he, he has broken the branch. The hornbill, acknowledging defeat, flew away. And the bulbul became the king of birds. Moral A wise one is a strong one. Greedy crane. Once, a crane lived by the side of a lake. The lake had plenty of fish and other water creatures. When the crane was young, he had a nice time there. Now the crane was old, far from the swiftness needed to catch a fish. Often he had to remain hungry. One day, the crane could not catch a single fish the whole day. In the evening, the crane started crying loudly out of hunger. The crab and the other fishes heard his loud wailing and asked why he had been weeping. The clever crane lied. Oh friends, I am crying for you people. A fortune teller has told me this lake will dry up very shortly. I am worried what will happen to you innocent creatures. As I grew up by this lake, the possible death of you friends makes me feel sad and worried. I have even stopped eating my food. The gullible fishes believed his words and said in a worried voice, Oh Crane, you are the oldest and most experienced among us. Please save our lives from this calamity. The shrewd crane, who was waiting for his opportunity, immediately agreed to render his help. The crane said, There is another lake at some distance from here. I can pick you up from this lake one by one and can drop you there safely. Hearing this, the fishes and the other creatures of the pond rejoiced and thanked him for his kind gesture. And with this, the old crane's problem of hunger was solved. The sly crane pretended to help them and started shifting creatures one by one. But this old crane was no saint. On the pretext of shifting the creatures to another lake, he took them into a deep forest where there was a big rock. The old crane could very easily kill the creatures there without any haste and eat them up. Days passed this way. Every day, the creatures who were willing to shift to the other lake requested him to oblige them at the earliest possible. The crane took them also and had a nice meal. One day, a crab, who was also the resident of the same lake, said, Since long, I have been requesting you to transport me to the other lake. So far, you have been obliging only the fishes. Now it is my turn. You take me on your back to the lake. The crane took the crab on his back and flew towards the rock. On the way, the crab asked about the shifted fishes. The crane thought that as the crab was on his back and they were far away from the lake, there was no danger in speaking the truth. He laughed. Ha ha ha! There is no lake around. All the other creatures who were transported by me are resting safely in my stomach. Now, be prepared to go to the same place. The moment the crab heard the crane's bitter truth, he held the crane's long neck between his sharp claws and severed it. The crane died immediately. The crab returned to the lake crawling and told the whole story to the residents there. The lake inhabitants 
thanked the crab for saving their lives with his wit and his promptness. Moral Do not believe the words of an enemy under any situation. The Dove and the Ant Once upon a time there lived an ant. One day the ant climbed the tree and it went through the branches in search of food. It just slipped from the branch and fell down into the water. The ant shouted and cried for help. Help! Help! A dove which was sitting on the branch saw the ant struggle. It just plucked a leaf from the tree and dropped it in the river to help the ant. Then the ant saw the leaf and with the help of the leaf it floated and reached the bank of the river safely. The ant saw that the dove had helped it, so it climbed up the tree to thank the dove. Thank you for saving me. Oh, please don't mention it. It was my duty. I'm very grateful to you. In future, if you need any help, don't forget me. Oh, certainly not. Oh, I thank God today for giving me such a nice friend. They both departed. Happily, things were going well with these friends. One day, when the ant was going home with his food, he saw two big legs before him. The ant was shocked. It looked up and saw that it was the legs of a hunter who had a bow and arrow with him. The ant saw that with his arrow, he was concentrating on a particular thing. It looked in the direction of the arrow and saw that it was pointing to his friend, the dove. Now he got an idea and a chance of helping the dove. Without wasting a single minute, the ant bit the leg of the hunter. The hunter screamed and shouted in pain. Ooh! Ouch! Ow! Ooh! Ah! He lost his concentration ouch, ouch, and his arrow was shot out in the wrong direction. Then the dove was alarmed by it and it flew away safely. After that incident, the dove came to thank the ant. Oh, thank you, my friend. Oh, it's my duty to save you. At first, I thought that how can you help me being a, such a small creature? But I was wrong. Thank you, thank you once again. They both became very good and very close friends. And both of them lived happily ever after. Moral A friend in need is a friend indeed. The Rabbit and the Hedgehog On the banks of the Narmada was a forest. The animals who lived there were always quarreling. We quarrel because we have no king to settle our disputes. Yes, we should have a king. But who will be our king? Pandemonium broke out. I will be the king. Not you. I will be the king. It should be me. An old and infirm wolf, who had recently migrated to that forest, was roused from his slumber. Where is this noise from? Let me see. When the animals saw the old wolf approaching, Why don't we make him our king? A good idea. So, when the old wolf came to them, We need a king. Will you be our king and rule over us? I can't believe my good luck. My days of starvation are over. I do not mind being king. 
but I dislike violence, so I will kill only if it's necessary, after making a careful study of each case. The animals were delighted. Oh, King, we too dislike fear and violence, but a king has to kill the guilty ones. And most of the time, I will find it necessary. The very next day, the hare and the hedgehog had a bitter quarrel. This hole is mine! No, it's mine! I found it first! You found it all right, but it was my father who made it! But your father abandoned it! I moved in, so it's mine! The rabbit was quiet for a moment. Then an idea struck him. Let's go to our king. Let him decide to whom it belongs. Fair enough. We'll go to him. So they went to the wolf. Oh, oh king, king, we, we seek, seek justice. justice. Why? What's the matter? The two creatures began explaining the situation at the same time. Just a minute. I'm old and can't hear properly. Come closer and explain the case to me. As soon as the unsuspecting animals came close to the wolf, he sprang on them and devoured them. All the animals ran for their life. If only, if only we had settled our own disputes instead of inviting a stranger to settle them for us. Moral, you should solve your own problems. The Clever Goat One day, a hungry wolf was looking for food. He saw a small grazing field near a rocky area. As he went nearer, he saw a large and healthy goat in the field. He slowly went near the goat, but the goat was alert. She turned to face the wolf and said, Oh, you look very weak and hungry. I'll be happy if you eat me. After all, one must spend one's life to serve others. The wolf was surprised, but also happy to hear this. Thank you for your kindness. I am so large. How will you eat me? Wait now. You stand here on the ground with your mouth wide open. I'll go up and run down the hill to jump straight into your mouth so you can gobble me up all. The foolish wolf did as the goat said. Hmm, I'm ready. But the clever goat went up the rocky hill and ran down at full speed. And soon she hit the wolf's face with great force. Soon the wolf lay unconscious due to the injury and the clever goat left the place to save her life. Moral, act when you have to. The Parrots Frequently troubled by the hunters, a flock of parrots decided to leave a shady banyan tree where they had made their nests. They decided to shift on the tall palm tree, which would not be easy for the hunters to climb up. The chief of the flock inspected the palm trees before making the nests there. He found that the shade of the palm leaves were enough for them. The chief then called all his followers and asked them to start their work of nest making. All the parrots were happy to shift to the new place. They were thrilled to find their new homes. But the chief was cautious and was still inspecting the pros and cons of the new place. Suddenly, he noticed a small creeper near the tall palm tree. The chief called all the other parrots who were relaxing in their nest. Ah, come down here! A small creeper has grown near the palm tree. We must remove it. The other parrots peeped out of their nests and looked at the small creeper on the ground. They mocked. Oh, chief! Do you feel danger from this small creeper? You are always worried. The chief tried to explain them the need for the removal. He said, Today this small creeper is tender, so we can easily remove it. 
But after some time, it won't remain the same. It will develop into a strong, thick creeper like rope. This tender creeper of today, if not removed, will provide the support to the hunters to reach the nests. And then it will be disastrous. Rah! The parrots did not want to come down as it would bring a halt to their enjoyment. They made some excuses and promised to finish the work on the next day. The parrots dilly-dallying allowed the creeper to grow. After some time, when the parrots tried to remove the creeper, it proved too strong to be removed. Soon the creeper turned into a thick, fibrous rope. And one day, proving the fear of the chief right, a hunter came there. He saw the thick creeper tied around the palm tree. The hunter found it quite easy to reach up to the nest with the help of the creeper. He climbed up to the nest and took away all the chicks of the parrots in their very presence. The parrots remained as silent spectators as they could not do anything. After that, they left the palm tree. The parrots repented for not taking their chief's advice seriously. Moral Never presume anything unimportant. The Tiger and the Woodpecker One day, as a tiger was devouring the game he had killed, a bone stuck in his jaw. Try as it might, he could not get the bone unstuck. I will not be able to eat anything unless I get this bone out. Days passed. He became weaker and weaker. If someone does not come to help me, I will soon die of starvation. A woodpecker who lived in the branches above watched him. The woodpecker was puzzled. What's the matter with you? Why do you lie there with your mouth open? The tiger beckoned to the woodpecker to come near and pointed to the bone in his mouth. Oh, oh, it's a bone. I shall remove it if you give me my fill of the flesh of the animals you kill. The tiger nodded his head. The woodpecker flew into the tiger's mouth, pulled out the bone, came out of the tiger's mouth at full speed, flew up to a tree and, perching there, dropped the bone. A few hours later, the tiger killed an animal and began devouring it. Hey friend, wait! Have you forgotten your promise? Give me my share! The tiger looked at the woodpecker and pretended that he had never seen him before. Who are you? Why should I offer you any part of this? The woodpecker was shocked. What? Don't you remember me? I pulled out the bone from your mouth! How could you forget me so soon? The tiger laughed. <laughs> you know I'm a wild animal. I could easily have eaten you when you entered my mouth. But I didn't. Be grateful for that and be gone. So that's it. You take advantage of me because I'm weak. But then, I have my sharp beak. The woodpecker patiently waited for the tiger to doze after the heavy meal. Ah, he's asleep. The woodpecker swooped down and pecked at one of the tiger's eyes, blinding it. The tiger roared with pain. Ah! You pierced my eye! How could you be so cruel? You know I have a sharp beak. I could easily have blinded you with both eyes. But I didn't. Be grateful for that and stop roaring so much. Moral. Don't try to cheat others. The Brahman and the Goat one day, a Brahman was returning home from a neighboring village. Just then, three hungry crooks happened to see him. It was kind of those villagers to give me this plump goat for the sacrifice. What a plump goat! Ah, 
I could make a fine dinner. Let's trick him out of it. It shouldn't be difficult. Listen, I'll tell you what we'll do. The first crook walked up to the Brahman. Oh Brahman, how can you defile yourself by carrying a dog on your shoulder? You fool! Don't you know a goat from a dog? Now, now, keep your temper. You are welcome to carry the dog if you wish. Are my eyes playing tricks on me? No, to be sure it's a goat. The Brahman walked on a little farther when the second crook stopped him. Why, holy sir, this dead calf may have been dear to you, but must you carry it on your shoulders? Have you forgotten that you are a Brahman? Are you blind? Can't you see that this is a live goat and not a dead calf? Please don't be angry, sir. I'm sorry my mistake, perhaps. What's the matter? Am I mad or are they? Hardly had he walked a few yards ahead when... Oh, Brahman, drop the donkey before anyone sees you. People will laugh. No, three of them cannot be wrong. That was no goat. It was a goblin that kept changing its shape. How could the villagers play such a mean trick on me? The Brahman did not utter a word. He pulled the goat off his shoulders, flung it to the ground and ran away as fast as he could. The three crooks laughed at the Brahman. <laughs> and they prepared to eat the goat. Moral, trust yourselves before you trust others. The dog and the donkey. Long ago, there lived an ass and a dog who belonged to a washerman of Varanasi. All is quiet. It's been a hard day. Tonight I shall sleep like a log. There, he has once again forgotten to give me my dinner. A few hours later, Good. He's fast asleep. I'm lucky. I can begin filling my sack. Oh, oh Lord, uh, it's a thief and the master is fast asleep. He turned to the dog. Look, a thief is carrying off our master's goods. Why don't you bark and wake him up? Why should I? Our master neglects me. A little fright will remind him that he needs me and must look after me better. The ass was furious. How can you let our master down, you unfaithful, ungrateful cur? Should I be grateful for being neglected? No, I will not wake him up. Then I will before the thief goes. I'd better be quick. The silly ass, he'll wake up the whole neighborhood. the thief had gotten away. The washerman woke up with a start. That stupid ass has ruined my sleep. I'll teach him to pray at all hours. Grabbing a cudgel, he rushed out into the yard. The washerman beat the ass mercilessly. The dog shook his head in pity. Poor ass. If only you had stuck to your duties instead of trying to perform mine. Would you have suffered this fate? Unfortunately for you, the thief has got away. And the master does not know why you prayed so loudly. Moral, do your own duty. The Foolish Brahman A learned Brahman named Gargya once went from his village to a forest to worship the god Shiva. Pleased with his devotion, the god appeared before him. O oh, pious Brahman, you deserve a boon. Ask for one. O oh God, please grant me the Sanjeevni so that I can bring the dead back to life. The god held out some green leaves. Whenever you want to bring the dead back to life, all you need to do is sprinkle the sap of these leaves on the corpse. The body thus raised will be stronger and more vigorous than before. Besides, 
These leaves will neither wither nor change. The Brahman was very happy as he walked back towards his village. With this, I shall sweep away the sorrow of death from my village. There will not be a single unhappy house there. My importance will grow in the village and I may even be made the headman. Suddenly, he began to have doubts. But supposing the god was only teasing me? Supposing these are just ordinary leaves? And... Just then, he saw a dead tiger lying in his path. Aha! I can test these leaves on this dead animal. Without stopping to think, the foolish, though learned Brahman, crushed the leaves in his palms and sprinkled the juice over the tiger. The tiger came to life. Mm, I'm hungry. It works! The leaves work! Suddenly, the tiger let out a loud roar. Oh God! What have I done? I'd better run for my life! But the tiger had seen him. It bounced on him. And that was the end of the foolish Brahman. Moral Haste makes waste. The Foolish Crane Long ago, there lived an old crane near a lake on the bank of which was a tall coconut tree. The lake being almost dry, there were just enough fish for the crane to live on. But the old crane was vain about his tree and his lake. How I wish other cranes too would come and settle here and see how lucky I am. Then one day, he saw a flock of cranes flying past his lake. Stop! Stop! Please stop! The leader of the flock saw him. That old bird is calling out to us. Let's fly down and see what he wants. When they reached the bank, Ah! I'm so glad you heard me. Please be my guest. You can perch on the coconut tree and eat the fish in the lake. He is good, but he's foolish. He wants to impress us, but at what cost? He will starve to death if we accept his invitation. So, on behalf of his flock, the wise leader declined the offer. We are pleased by your affection for us, but please permit us to go our way. Yes, our wise leader is right. We are so many of us. What you have is sufficient only for you. Please permit us to go elsewhere. If you don't accept my hospitality, I will give up my life. <laughs> the wise leader had no choice but to accept. All right, we shall be your guests. Oh, come then, let us go to my tree. So the cranes all went to the coconut tree. The old crane felt quite proud and strutted about in his vanity. Make yourselves comfortable and when you are hungry, please eat the fish in my lake. There is enough fish for all of you. The flock of cranes took him at his word and began feasting on the fish. Ah, I bet I can eat more than you. I'll bet you can't. I've eaten six fish already. Can either of you better that? With all their betting, they soon finished all the fish in the lake. Oh dear, not a single fish left. What shall I give them in the evening? What shall I eat when they are gone? The old crane began to repent of his folly. But it was too late. That evening, the leader of the flock came to him. There is nothing here for our evening meal. We are grateful to you for your hospitality, but we must leave now. I cannot let my flock starve. As they flew away, the leader felt sorry for the lone crane near the lake. He's too old to fly with us. If only he had listened to us. Poor fool, he will not survive for long. A few days later, weak and hungry, the vain old crane breathed his last. Moral 
Make sure you have enough before helping others. The Foolish Fox Once, two rams met in a narrow way in opposite directions. Both rams did not give way for the other to proceed further. Both of them started to fight to find their way. Blood started oozing out from their heads. A fox saw this from a distance. The fox was a foolish one. The fox thought, I can drink the blood coming out from the heads of the rams. Let me wait for some time to get more blood from them. The rams continued their fight. Suddenly, the fox, without sense, jumped in between the rams to drink the blood. The rams got wild on seeing the fox in between them. Both rams with their horns pierced the fox in anger. The fox died immediately. Then the rams returned to normalcy and went their way peacefully. Moral Think before you act. The Proud Bee Once, a very beautiful bee lived in a forest. She was admired for her beauty, but she was very proud and pompous. One day, as she was flying around, she saw a baby elephant. She went and sat on one of its ears. Hey, who are you? I'm the most beautiful bee. Don't you know me? You have a large and fat body, while my delicate wings make me the envy of all. Oh well, I'm glad to meet you. And, uh, where are you going? Oh, nowhere and everywhere. You see, with these beautiful wings, I can fly anywhere, unlike you. <laughs> But we are equal in one way, because you have a trunk, while I have this proboscis. The humble elephant nodded. But my proboscis can suck nectar from the flowers, whereas your trunk can't. So that makes me one up on you. Just as the bee said this, a strong breeze started to blow. Soon it turned into a storm and twigs, leaves, sand and debris flew all around. The tiny bee could not hold on any longer. She was also blown away in the wind. Oh! Somebody! Somebody help me! Please! Ah! And as the elephant turned to help, he saw her disappearing with the flying debris. The baby elephant went on its way with his four legs which carried his large, fat body and his humble and simple heart. Moral Humble hearts are strong. The Tiger and the Traveller One day, a tiger, too old to hunt, was walking by a marshy pool when he saw a gold bangle. I may as well pick it up. It could be of some use. I got the bait. Now I must wait for the catch. Just then, a traveller passed by the opposite bank. The tiger spotted him. Men are tasty and love gold. Hey, you there! Do you want this gold bangle? I have no use for it. A, a gold bangle? It's tempting, but no. I must not risk my life for it. Hmm, I'd love to have that bangle, but how can I trust a fierce beast like you? You have every reason to suspect me. I have been wicked in my time, but now, on the advice of a sannyasi, I am changed. So, come across and take this. If I come close, you may forget the sannyasi's advice when you smell me. I won't. Besides, I'm old. My claws are blunt. So do not fear. Come, wade across the pool and take this. The traveler's love of gold overcame his natural fear of the tiger 
Hmm. He seems to be telling the truth. I will wade across and take it. But he had hardly taken a few steps at that time. Oh, oh, it's a mire. I'm stuck. Help! Ho, ho. So you are stuck in the mud, I see. Never mind. Wait, I'll come and help you out. The tiger waded slowly up to the traveler and pounced on him. Alas, what a fool I've been. I let greed overcome my reason. Moral, greed leads to downfall. Pebbles Kid Stories